And they started the program yesterday, and so they knew about you when you were involved with the Klan and how you exposed them. So <laughs> I wanted you to come and, and, and address them in case they had any questions. Yeah, I was glad he's asking about undercover work. I guess meaning the Klan. My uncle had been in the Klan here in Jacksonville, and uh, I didn't like the sound of the thing. And when my turn came, I, I got in it to, to break it up. Was it rough? A, a, a dirty, dirty bunch. Oh. You feel unclean after you put them around those fellows. There were no reprisals? Yeah. They didn't try to they get you back or anything like that? Or anything like yeah, that? they was trying non-stop. Really? <laughs> and I was trying non-stop not to get caught. I know, that's right. Where you living at now? Huh? Where you live at? <laughs> no clans in here. <laughs> <laughs> I had a call and the telephone says, this is the Grand Dragon John Baumgarten says, just want to see how you are and let you know where I uh, know where you're at. <laughs> <laughs> how does it make you feel to come back and see how this place have accomplished and helped so many people? How do you feel about that now? I think it's beautiful. It's the only word for it, you know. I, I was asking myself and them how many million meals that is. A million people hungry and, and got fed. You know, that's my kind of religion. No, you one of a kind. Yeah. Uh. Yeah, God bless you. Yeah, thank you. Good to see y'all. Good to hear. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Good to hear. All right. Thank you. my home, Beluthahatchee. Uh, the word I got from Zora Neale Hurston, it's a mystical Florida Shangri-La thing out of black Seminole lore, meaning uh, uh, Florida never, never land. It's been designated a literary landmark by the U.S. Friends of the Library in honor of Woody Guthrie's uh, creations here, some 80 songs, and they tell me that they're going to put a, make it a double dip uh, literary landmark as soon as I drop dead. They'll put up another plaque alongside of his uh, for what I did here. I was telling you about Woody having written uh, 80 songs out here in 1953 and they are unsung and unpublished and unknown and they're all about Florida and my place Beluthahatchee and the bullfrogs and baby buzzard and got one called Pussy is a Pretty Thing. That's Woody's sitting on the log about 1950 out here in front of the house. When I saw the log, I hollered at Woody and said, grab your guitar and get out on that log. And he did. And uh, I had to get out in the mud up to my neck to get that angle. Joe Klein asked me, what did you and Woody talk about? And I said, well, we didn't do all that much talking. And we said, why not? I said, because we're in total agreement about everything. He's survived by his son, Lauren, is that correct? Okay, one grandchild. And does he have any living siblings? What Stetson lived for was to change the racial politics of America and the South. And while I think he had his doubts until very late in life, I think the election of a black president and of a black mayor in Jacksonville, I think, made him feel like he had accomplished something. There's still racism around, but uh, we don't tolerate it the way we used to. When he talked to an emergency room physician at Baptist South, he told them that very few people get to achieve what they set out to do in life, and he was one of the lucky ones who had. As happens many times, I think Stetson will be much more known now that he's deceased than he was ever known when he was alive. I think that he would want us all to be a little bit of the rabble rouser. If you see something that feels like injustice to you, stand up to it. That's what Stetson did. You listen to Stetson. You envision the kind of America that we all 
dream about, a place where liberty and justice for all was not just mere words, but a concept that was to be lived and to be enjoyed and to be appreciated by all. And that's what made you really appreciate Stetson.